seven minutes already. I'll keep this quick. So it's my absolute delight to present this work that uh, the FES task force has been working on for um, years, essentially. Uh, nothing relevant here. So in case you may not have heard, uh, I, I don't think I need to tout the uh, benefits of flexible endoscopy for surgeons uh, to this group. We've seen uh, evidence of that this morning, and uh, I, I take it that if you're here, you believe that endoscopy, uh, surgeons should do endoscopy. Um, and so uh, in 2006, or even before, the fundamentals of endoscopic surgery was uh, task force was created and the goal of that program is to create a uh, program to evaluate or assess the skills and knowledge required to perform flexible endoscopy and the program consists of an online curriculum, a uh, cognitive test which has been validated and will be presented elsewhere and today I will share with you the process by which we developed the hands-on test and, uh, and provided uh, and share with you some of the validity evidence for that test. So the purpose of this study, which was a multi-center study among many of the, the members of the FES task force, was to uh, evaluate the reliability and validity of the hands-on component of the FES examination and to establish the pass score for the test. So as part of the uh, initial steps, the task force got together and had to define really what the skill set was that we wanted to measure. And so at that point, we got together a group of experts and created, similar a little bit to the process that FLS was created, a deconstructed list of what we thought the fundamental skills were. Uh, and this thereby guided the, the, the um, development of the simulator program. And uh, despite the fact that we did consider some of the simulators that were already out there, there were none of them that really met the needs of being able to assess all of the skills that we wanted to assess. And so um, a request for proposals was put out and we finally uh, decided to go with Symbionics, uh, the makers of the GI Mentor 2. Uh, here is the list of deconstructed tasks, including scope navigation, which includes all of those things under there, loop reduction, retroflexion, et cetera. And so despite the higher costs of the VR system, we thought that it was a very good uh, um, for, for the following reasons, so that it's clean, it doesn't need to be reprocessed, um, that there's a centralized way to, con to collect and control the data. Um, and they had also made a commitment to create a more cost-effective desktop model, which is now actually undergoing in, in beta testing. So the FES test consists of five tasks, which last for approximately 10 minutes, and creating these was a, a very iterative process among the members of that subcommittee and some bionics back and forth doing pilot studies, not only to develop the tasks themselves, but to decide what the metrics for those tasks would be. So this is task one, which essentially um, asks the test taker to line up the shadow with the uh, target in the lumen. Task two is a, a loop reduction task. Uh, task three uh, asks people to identify uh, and uh, actually uh, fix targets in the retroflexed position. Task four uh, is a uh, task which uh, starts at the end of a uh, simulated colon and asks participants or test takers to identify um, small targets kind of hidden behind folds. And the last task is a targeting task uh, where uh, there's an instrument that comes out of the scope of the, end of, the, uh, of the endoscope, comes out of the channel of the endoscope, and uh, basically people have to target that in the middle of that green area. So you can see here the uh, test taker has to touch that green area and fix the target for a period of time. So as I mentioned, uh, all of these studies, all of these centers were IRB approved. We had uh, participants of all levels of training. We gave them a questionnaire asking about their endoscopic experience. The test started out with practice on endobubbles so you could get familiar with the virtual reality interface. And then a trained proctor supervised the test. They were given online instructions with a video. Um, and, uh, and then we had to develop the metrics basically taking into account uh, oh, oh, and then finally, uh, after, the, after the whole test was developed and we developed the pass score, uh, a group of expert uh, endoscopists took the test to provide additional validity evidence for the pass score. So uh, we correlated FES scores with uh, experience, 
We looked at the internal consistency between the task items, and we also did test retests where we had a certain sub uh, uh, subset of those uh, participants take the test again just to make sure uh, that we had that uh, test retest. Contrasting groups methodology, this is a type of statistical analysis that's used to decide uh, the pass score and we, defy, we defined qualified candidates as those who had per uh, performed at least 100 combined upper and lower endoscopies. And then the receiver operating curve characteristics is a statistical method used to determine the cut score uh, uh, similar to what was used with uh, FLS as well. And this had to be consistent with what we determined the cut score to be for the cognitive test. So we had 160 participants, 117 of which we had full data for, we excluded six. 67.6 were male, 82% surgical, and 17% gastroenterology. This is the frequency distribution of the combined cases reported. So we had about a quarter who had very little experience uh, um, and uh, uh, above 200 cases another quarter as well. The five skills, the internal consistency of the five tasks of the FLS modules correlated 0.82, which is uh, quite good actually. Skill four, for various reasons, um, we didn't use the same statistical analysis and I won't get into the details with that, but partly because skill four not only assesses efficiency and error, but also thoroughness. Uh, the correlation between the FES performance and reported cases was high at 0.73, and 25 uh, of the experienced endoscopists, so there was a 92% pass uh, rate for the experienced endoscopists that took the test. The pass score essentially took into account experience, and like I said, with the receiver operated curves, uh, I won't share with you the pass score itself because we have to preserve the integrity of the test, but the sensitivity of that uh, receiver operating characteristic curves were 0.81 and the one minus specificity 0.21. So the pass rate for competent endoscopists, the, these are, that's what that ends up mean. So the limitations and tribulations, this was a very difficult, I think more difficult than we anticipated to work with the virtual reality environment. And I don't know if any of you have worked with trying to develop metrics in a virtual environment. There's a lot of, um, uh, difficulties in terms of what we expect and, and although we can provide high fidelity visuals without haptics and without the ability to incorporate all of the things that we have in in real life um, there, there is some there are definitely some challenges there um, we had a lot of exclusions as you know noted we had 160 people who participated but it eventually only ended up at 111 and unfortunately that was related to software issues and uh, updates and so on and we've since resolved those issues and again, this is only a, a test and not a, a program that's designed for testing or training, which is unlike FLS. I'm done. So essentially, <laughs> um, FES uh, meets the uh, standards for high stakes assessments. Together with the cognitive tests, I think this can really help redefine the way we teach and assess flexible endoscopic skills. And I encourage you all to sign up and take the FLS test. Just want to acknowledge the, the team that really put all of this together. It was a, a real, uh, effort uh, on behalf of Sages and Peppa and Karen who really helped with the data analysis and of course all of the participants. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Melina. This is a great example of uh, the Sages working collectively uh, uh, to create another uh, excellent product in the fundamentals portfolio. Uh, it's now a mandated part of surgical training, and so surgical residents starting this year will have to uh, participate in the curriculum and complete uh, this uh, skills test as part of their uh, board requirement. Thank you very much for all your hard work. No time. For no, we're not going to have questions. <clears throat> Sorry? You can catch your letter. Okay. <laughs>